Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to show you how I put together this really cool accessory that every man cave, every bar should have. It's a really cool whiskey dispenser and it's not just for whiskey. You can put in rum, you can put in tequila, scotch, whatever you want. So it's basically just a whole bunch of fittings and a couple other nice little features and uh, I'm going to show you how I built this thing. Now there's a lot of guys out there that are taking a bottle like this, bottle of Jack Daniels, and are making these dispensers to where they're mounting these bottles on here upside down. And I tried to engineer that thing 15 different ways. And the thing is you got to get this cheap plastic cap to fit up inside of a fitting and not leak and it's got to stay and it's got to hold up all the way to that bottle. Uh, the other downside is you got to flip your whole contraption over to screw that bottle on from underneath and then you got to turn the whole thing back over. This thing weighs in at about 18 pounds, so it's not really an option. Plus, you got to try to do that without breaking that cap off, however you have that mounted in there. The other problem is the bottle doesn't burp. So it looks like a water cooler, and your stuff's coming out glug, 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 and it just doesn't come out smooth because you have a hard time getting air back into the bottle. A lot of people are putting vent tubes up the back side, and, you know, it's really limited because if you make it for Jack Daniels, the cap is not necessarily conducing to other products out there. You may not screw this onto your favorite tequila bottle. It, it, it's a different kind of cap, so you're really limited by what you can put in this thing. So what I ended up doing was just going down to the uh, store and buying these glass vases. They cost about six bucks, and it's really easy to drill a hole in the bottom of it. There's a stainless fitting that goes into the bottom, and uh, it's got food grade gaskets, and this thing holds about 1.4 liters. So I made a wooden top that uh, matches the mahogany base, or I'm sorry, the walnut base. So basically you just take the cap off, pour your product in, holds about 1.4 liters, put your cap back on, and you're dispensing. If you don't want to do whiskey, maybe later on you want to do tequila. So you just empty it out, put the tequila in, and then you can put anything you want in this thing. I uh, opted to go with stainless steel tubing on the back side. Uh, some guys are out there using vinyl tubing which is going to turn brown after a while and it's going to end up getting really gross so I just put some stainless fittings on there and uh, solve that problem now the other cool thing about this is it's not only a whiskey dispenser it's a touch lamp so anywhere you touch this thing you got three different settings high medium low and maybe you want to pour in the dark and you don't want to fumble for the light so having a little uh, touch lamp on there adds a nice feature and um, pretty simple to build, a couple little tricks here and there, but uh, if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, I've got a table full of parts here. If you're going to build one of these, uh, this is everything you need to put it together. Um, some of the stuff i got on here, these are cast steel fittings. These are not the black pipe or the sprinkler pipe that you'll find at Home Depot. Uh, these came from a supply house, they're American made. Uh, all these brass fittings are American made, all these T's, all these adapters, all these reducers right here, it's all American made. This uh, walnut block I'm going to use for the base, it was made in Illinois. Uh, the stainless wedge lock fittings, American made, the tubing uh, to go inside those fittings. Uh, these are 3 8 by 4 and a half, uh, anchor bolts. They're basically used for uh, hanging things from uh, ceilings and beams and things like that. Again, uh, 3 8 uh, diameter by four and a half inches long, uh, American made. Uh, this Libby glass vase right here, I found it at Michael's. Uh, it's American glass. Uh, it was uh, about six bucks. So uh, if you break one, they're really cheap, super easy to find. And the only thing I had to get uh, from, say, Home Depot is these little items right here. This little light socket here. Uh, it's like three dollars or so. This is uh, going to connect your bulb to the top. This fitting is inch and a quarter by three quarter by inch and a quarter. And this fitting just happens to push down and seat perfectly inside here. And uh, it's a really nice fit, real clean look. Uh, you put a little hot glue on that and shove it in there, and um, it's not going to come out. And when it's all done and you got your wires all connected, there's a little black cap here. It's like just a hole plug. Uh, it's just an inch and a half hole plug. It's going to fit perfectly in here and it's going to close off this hole and trim it off real nice. Uh, some of the other stuff that I had to go get from Home Depot is I wanted a touch switch. So th this is the sensor for the touch switch. So when, when it's all put together, 
any fitting that you touch anywhere on the metal, you'll have a low, medium, high, and off. Um, these do not work with LED bulbs. So um, I had, went out and found a, an incandescent Edison style bulb. Uh, these are getting harder to find. So if you're gonna do this with a touch switch, I would recommend buying an extra one and throwing it in a closet because uh, you never know how long these are gonna be around. Uh, eight foot power cord, uh, lamp cord, when you go to plug it all in, you're gonna need a couple pieces of a wire to wire from the touch switch up to this light socket when it's all done. And um, that's about it for parts. Um, I'm gonna show you real quick. Uh, I also made this, this temporary base. Um, not knowing where the spacing was gonna be, I uh, didn't know where the holes were gonna end up, and if I got it off, this is about 50 cents to make. This is a lot more expensive. So having a sacrificial template here uh, really helps, and um, you can start building it on this, plus it doesn't, plus you won't get this one all beat up as you're starting to build it. And once this is done, I can use this as a drill template to just put this on top and mark, uh, transfer the holes and drill them through, and this will be, uh, I'll get this right the first time. So again, this is really simple, and you can throw it away when you're finished. And get rid of this for a second. Now the, um, this is a, uh, um, a homebrew fitting. I found this on Amazon, it's about 17 bucks. And you're supposed to put this in from the bottom side with the gasket on the bottom and the metal washer on the inside. I really don't like the idea of pressing a, uh, a metal washer onto glass. There's more, a better chance you're gonna break it, so we're gonna ditch that. And I didn't like the red one either, so um, just for aesthetics, I got rid of the red silicone, and I found some white silicone. And this is one's gonna go on here. When this goes up inside, this one will go down in. It's a little bit thinner. This one will go on top. And when you go to tighten on the silicone, uh, it grabs and it tends to have one to roll and curl and distort real bad. So I made a little Teflon ring that's going to go on top of that also. So when you go to snug this up, that Teflon is going to slide real nice and it's not going to distort your actual silicon uh, sealing uh, gaskets. Uh, this is a food grade silicone. Uh, it comes in contact with food products. It's, it's going to be nice and safe. And that's going to finish off that fitting real nice. Now to... Uh, Drill holes in the glass. I'm going to show you how to do that later, but uh, this is a three inch ABS cap. It has a one inch hole drilled into it. And what this is, it's going to be a drill guide to uh, drill your one inch hole. This is a one inch diamond bit. I found it at Home Depot for like 35 bucks. And um, it drills through this glass like butter. Uh, this cap fits a little loose on here. So I found some plastic shim stock. You could use masking tape if you had to. Put that up in there. And it takes up all that slop and, uh, and it uh, keeps it nice and centered so you get a nice clean cut. And uh, these right here, I will show you uh, later what those are used for in the help of drilling the hole in the bottom of that. So we'll talk about that later. Okay, the first step is to build the feet on this thing and to get the anchor bolts set up so they go down through the wooden base and secure from the uh, bottom side. So what I did is I took these nipples and I drilled a quarter inch hole all the way through the uh, bottom end of it, kind of close to the edge, but not too far away. And I got a quarter inch stainless pin here. Now you can use a bolt or you can use anything. Um, as long as it's strong enough and you can, it can even have threads on it, it doesn't really matter. But you want to go through there and basically captivate uh, that anchor bolt. It's gonna move around there and slide back and forth, but that's okay. So that pin was ground off, so it just fits below the threads on this fitting, and now what you're gonna do next is you're gonna take this one inch by uh, three quarter reducer, and you're gonna screw it onto this nipple here, and now get it back in there. And once you tighten that up, it's gonna captivate uh, that quarter inch pin down inside this uh, brass fitting, and there's no way it's gonna come out. Uh, once you do that, you screw this onto here, and this one is uh, inch and a quarter by one, this is one by three quarter, and this is the three quarter inch nipple. Now when it's all done, you'll have this anchor bolt that's kind of flopping around in here, and you'll have a little bit of room for, uh, for error when you're drilling your holes in your base, but um, once it's all tightened up, this will go down inside just enough to where you can counterbore the backside for a nut and a washer, and you'll really be able to pull this thing down uh, and, and 
make it tight. Now, when these fittings come from the store, there's a rough casting on both sides. Actually, most of these have them. There's a ridge there, and they're not completely flat. They weren't designed to be. So what I did is, you can do this on a belt sander, maybe with a file. I machined that surface right there on a lathe to where it sits perfectly flat. I didn't want any rocking back and forth. When it was all done, I wanted it to sit nice and flat and uh, no gaps under there. And these had a pretty good size casting mark on both sides. So once I got that off of there, they, they sit real nice and uh, it makes for a good foundation for the start of your project. Okay, these are all the parts you're gonna need for the first part of your assembly. You've got your feet that are gonna go down onto the wooden base and you've got the anchors already hanging out of there. Uh, you've got a couple of um, couple of 45s. I think one goes forward, one goes backwards. You've got your brass nipples, your elbows, and then it goes up into this T-section. Now, when you're putting this together, uh, it's going to be really difficult to try to fish this wire through afterwards. So you may want to start uh, by fishing the wire through and get it in there now. Uh, be careful when you're when you're tightening these fittings up. You don't want to start twisting this wire up. I mean, if you twist it up and it gets real tight, uh, you could actually cut it uh, on the inside of one of these fittings. There are some sharp edges in there, and you don't want to cut through the insulation. So, as you're putting it together, just pay real close attention that you're not overwinding this wire, and it's allowed to move in there freely when you when you get it all put together. And uh, we'll come back. We'll have this section uh, already assembled. Okay, so I've got this lower section um, assembled. You can see there's, there's really not much to it. It's pretty basic. I uh, didn't really need to make a video of that. A um, couple important things I mentioned earlier was make sure these wires are, are nice and free to uh, move around through there. They're not twisted up and not tangled and uh, you know that the insulation didn't get cut on them. So I, I drilled some holes in my temporary base here and I um, also put an extra hole and usually I just curl these wires up inside just to get them uh, out of the way But I thought this time I would just drill a hole down through the, through the base. You can stick the wires through there and fish them out through the bottom And then uh, The hardest thing about this was once you screw it together Getting this in to sit flat and not rock rock back and forth is the uh, the most challenging part. I mean Having a bench vise to hold some of these fittings while you're tightening other ones really helps. Um, I did put a little bit of Teflon tape. I've got this quarter inch wide Teflon tape here. I just did a little wrap on the end of each fitting. I didn't want it to show when it was all finished, so I just uh, taped the end of the first couple of threads. Uh, this makes it a lot easier to go together. I mean, it is metal on metal, so uh, there's a chance these things could start galling up, but the Teflon tape makes them go together a lot smoother and uh, makes it go together easier. Now, I probably had this thing in and out of the vise about 20 or 25 times, making little tiny adjustments to get it to go flat. It looks easy, but you can get off in the weirdest little angles. These could be twisted, these could be twisted, uh, your height could be different. So once you get them nice and flat, it's gonna make a nice solid foundation. And then you can see how those anchors just come, kind of come out of the bottom. And then you just put your nuts and your washers on. And uh, once this gets into the thicker uh, final base, the uh, these will be counterboard down inside the wood. But once you do that, now you've got a nice solid foundation. Um, your wires will be down in the bottom. That will go into this pocket that will get milled out in here. And these will get fished up through the top into the light fixture. So. That part's done. Uh, it feels really good. It's nice and solid. There's no rock or wobble on it. Um, you can see how it's, they all sit flat all the way around. And that's the most challenging part about putting this section together is getting these to sit flat on your on your base. So in the next video, we're going to start building the uh, the upper mid section, and um, then we'll just uh, keep building. Okay, these are all the parts right here that are gonna uh, we're gonna use for the uh, the upper section. This will be the top where the uh, the actual light fixture uh, goes in eventually. We won't put it in right now, but um, that's where that's gonna go. Um, I did wrap one of these with Teflon tape. You can see how I just wrapped the end of it, and this really helps with these things going together. Uh, makes it a lot smoother, and there's less chance that it's gonna stick. Uh, this is just quarter inch Teflon tape. If you use the really wide, like half inch tape. It's going to show, it's going to look kind of funny when it's all done. Now, 
when we get into these pipe fittings here, this is the check valve we talked about earlier. You can see there's arrows on it indicating flow. So we don't want any uh, liquid going back this way and going into these fittings. When you put these together, you are gonna have to use Teflon tape for the whole body of it, because uh, obviously you're gonna have liquid going through this section and you want it to seal up. Back here, it's just uh, preference whether you wanna do this or not. Uh, this is the uh, swedge lock stainless tubing fitting that will go out the bottom. And this is the one that gets attached to the glass. We're not gonna put this one in right away. We're gonna save that for last because we wanna put it into the, uh, into the bottom of the glass vase, uh, make it an assembly, and then it will all it will go together um, in one piece when it's finished. So we're gonna do this one next, and we'll get it mounted up on top, and then we'll see what that looks like. Okay, you can see I got the uh, the upper sections done here. I've got the fittings on the back. This is where the, uh, the glass uh, vase is gonna go, and then you got the fitting coming out the bottom where the tube's gonna go over to the valve. Um, this part here is uh, pretty simple to put together. Uh, you can assemble all this uh, right here at one time, put this piece on last on top, and it really helps if you, before you screw this piece on, pull these wires back inside, pull them out the bottom to where there's only a couple of inches sticking down inside, and uh, just leave the wires sticking up like that. That way when you screw this fitting on, the wires won't twist up if they're hanging out here, they'll just get all bunched up in there. And then once you get this tight to where you want it, you can just reach back up in here and you can feed these back out. And then on the next video, we're gonna put the light fixture in, put the cap on the back, and uh, then we're gonna put the arms on and um, go from there. Okay, the remaining parts of this assembly are uh, gonna be the arms. Uh, this is gonna be the arm with the dispense nozzle on it, and this one here just doesn't really do anything. You just got a couple fittings and it gets a plug screwed into the end, just kind of close it off, just you know, just finish it off the, the little trim piece there. Um, this is your second check valve that goes back into the T, and then this will be your dispense valve in here that goes into the, in the back. I uh, found this one, it's actually pretty easy to turn, so you don't have to fight it too much. Uh, this is the other swedge lock fitting, it's gonna go down, it's gonna loop around to the back of that, uh, that glass uh, vase. Uh, this is the, the little hose barb, um, I think I talked about this earlier. I'm going to machine those little ridges off of there. Uh, this, this is made to bite into your tubing when you're putting a tubing and a hose clamp on here. But I kind of want it to be smooth, so I'm going to chuck this up in the lathe, and I'm just going to turn those off of there and just make it a nice little smooth, uh, smooth bore. So these right here, you almost have to assemble one at a time. If you try to put too many of these together at once and then put them on, it's not going to spin on because it's going to hit other parts of the of the assembly, so you might just have to start with one fitting at a time, get it tight, make adjustments as you go, and uh, there's no way you can assemble this all in one piece and then put it on in one piece. It, it'll, it'll just interfere when you're trying to thread it on. Same way with this one, uh, you gotta kinda get everything to fit, how you all position this uh, is up to you, and um, you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out when it starts going together. Um, so that's it, we'll start putting these on one at a time and then uh, we'll see what the, the final part looks like before we start uh, wiring it up and doing some other things to it. All right, so it's time to uh, drill out the bottom of this uh, glass vase. Um, I was gonna do this out in the garage, but it is the first week of August in Phoenix and since my garage is pushing 130 degrees, we're gonna do it right here in the kitchen sink. So, as I said before, um, I got this uh, black ABS pe uh, PVC cap, or not PVC, it's ABS cap, it's three inches, and the, what's nice about this is it has, a, uh, it has a flat top on it. If you get with a PVC cap, uh, the PVC has a big dome over the top of it, and when you go to put your hole saw inside of it, it's, there's gonna be a lot of places for that to move around and it's not gonna work really well. So you want, the, you want the hole on the cap to come as close to the glass as possible. Uh, they charge you a little bit more for the ABS cap than they do the PVC, but you know, your results are gonna come out a lot better. So this moved around just a little bit and uh, like I said, I found this uh, plastic shim stock to go up in here and it's gonna take up all the play. Uh, keep that thing from wobbling around. You can use masking tapes. It's only going to be on there one time. 
but the plastic shim stock works real nice. It doesn't move around at all. Now, this is really easy. I got this uh, full saw at Home Depot. Uh, you run lots of water on it. Just keep it cool. And uh, I'm gonna show you how fast this is. Um, we're only gonna go about halfway through uh, with the cap on, uh, and then we're gonna take the cap off, and then we can use the, the hole as a guide to go the rest of the way through. Give me enough of a uh, a witness in that glass where we can take this cap off, rinse that out a little bit. It's really hard to see how far you've gone through, uh, but it, it is in there quite a bit. Now, earlier in the video, I talked about a couple of little pieces, and that would be these right here. And here's what happens when you're drilling through glass like this: if you allow the hole saw just to go punch through down an open space you're going to get a lot of chipping on your glass and it's going to come out it could come out up to a quarter of an inch um, it's going to break out because you have nothing supporting the underside of that glass you can't really feel when it's going to punch through so if you put this up here this could be wood this is just some plastic i had laying around um, to give it something to back up against you'll get a lot smoother uh, a breakthrough and you won't get any of that chipping around uh, the inside of the vase on the on the bottom side so now let's just put it on here and it sits flat on there now we'll run some water and we'll just drill it the rest of the way through we're almost there so this shouldn't take too long Sure, keep that water on there. Just about be there. that all right so that did a real nice job I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in the camera probably not but uh, that's a real clean hole in there there's like little to no chipping there's a little tiny little spot there. We're going to go through and, and pick that out real quick where it broke free because you want that fitting to be able to fit up in there. And that's it. 
All right, so that's it for uh, drilling the glass vase. It's a real nice hole. I just got a tiny bit of chipping, which is not a big deal, but it's probably not even a, a 16th of an inch and a couple little spots there. But once you put all those fittings in there with the, those uh, silicone gaskets, you won't see any of them. And then you got a nice clean surface down here for that, um, for that ceiling gasket, which actually goes on the bottom. So that's it for this. And, uh, Did you like that little thermal image uh, of my garage? You thought I was kidding about that 130 degrees. So anyway, so now we're, uh, we've got this all drilled up. We've got it cleaned and dried. It's time to put this fitting in. So this is the fitting with the, uh, the thicker gasket that I made for the bottom. It fits up in here real nice. And uh, now you've got to put the nut and the Teflon ring. Let me get that out of there. So you've got the nut and it's going to have this, te this Teflon ring to back it up. And then you got your other ceiling washer that's going to go right there. We've got to get it up inside the glass. So this is just a half inch extension with a socket on it. And we're just going to balance all that right there. And we're going to bring it down and just get that to go in. And then we can just tighten it up carefully. Now when you're tightening this up, you're not torquing a flywheel on a Ford folks. So just gently. And that's it. That, that's all there is to it. Uh, you've got your fitting in the bottom. It's all ready to go on and uh, fill it up with some product. Okay, so we've got the arms put on and we've got the dispense valve right under here. Let's see what that looks like. Just a little uh, quarter turn valve. Uh, you've got your uh, other fitting here for your stainless tube. Um, you got your pour spout that I put around here, and I remember I said I was going to machine the, uh, the ridges off of that to make a nice little smooth uh, bore. I've got the uh, I've got the light fixture, uh, the light socket, just hot glued up inside here. It's really tight; it's not going to come back out. And then once you get the wires uh, connected on the back side, just a couple of wire nuts here. You want to just uh, you just take these, just curl them up, just stick them down in there. There's plenty of room for them. And then once you got those down in there, you got this little plastic, uh, it's just a panel cap, um, inch and a half size. And you just put that over the back and snap that in. And that back is nice and uh, nice and uh, trimmed off flush and, and you don't have to look at it anymore. So now the only thing that's really left is to put the stainless tube on. We're going to take this tube right here and we're going to bend it to go between this fitting and this fitting. But there's something you want to do first. We've got the glass vase. Uh, you saw earlier in the video, we've already got it drilled out. We've already got the fitting in it. You want to put some Teflon tape on this and you can go ahead and screw it on now. And when you tighten it up, you can see this one kind of wobbles a little bit. It's not a perfect, uh, perfectly flat uh, bottom on this particular vase. My other one's turned out better. Tighten this with a wrench from the bottom. Don't, don't crank this glass and try to tighten it up. So now what you want to do before you put this tube on, is you want to make sure this vase is straight up and down. So set this thing on something really flat, kitchen counter or something that you know is flat. And you'll have to take, a, you have to make adjustments back here on this uh, check valve here. You want to bend this around to get this thing straight up and down. And then down here into the belly, you can put a pipe wrench uh, down on this one. I don't know if you can see that. But you want to put a pipe wrench down under here uh, this bottom T and you want to make those two adjustments and you want to get this vase perfectly straight up and down The reason being is once you put this stainless tube in here You are not going to get any more adjustment out of this So if you put it all together and you stand back and it looks crooked you can be like oh crap I can't straighten it back out. So make sure this thing is nice and true in all directions um, Straight up and down and then when you put this on you're finished That's all we really have left to do is bend up that tube and finish up the wooden base and get it all wired up down there and uh, and we're done.
now that all the millwork is finished on the wooden base, you can see I've got the two holes here for the mounting location. And then there's also a hole that comes up here and it's actually drilled at an angle because if you flip this over, that touch switch sensor needs to go down inside this pocket and you need to get the wire to come up out of that into the bottom of the, the little robot leg. So what that looks like on here is you've got your two wires that you fish all the way up to your lamp and you've only got this area right here as a target so you don't want to get the hole in the wooden block too far away from the mounting hole or else it's going to show. So you come in here at an angle and you drill into there and you get it to come out right there and then when you put your, uh, your module down inside you can wire it up real easy. There's also a second hole that you have to drill going from the mounting leg up into here which is going to be for your little touch sensor. So this has to get bonded to the metal part of the frame and this goes to the little module. And then I've got a hole that came in from the back that comes in right here for your power wire and I put this pin in here to loop the wire around it to act as kind of a strain relief so you can't pull the cord out. So I'm going to put a clear plastic cover on this when it's all done. It's going to finish it off real nice. And that's all there is to making the wooden base. Okay everybody, thanks for being patient. This has been a long video and uh, we covered a lot of stuff but we were almost done. So uh, I was able to bend up the uh, stainless steel tube and get it fit in here real nice. It actually took me two tries. Uh, to get it to go just the way I wanted it to. So we got that in, we got it all tightened up. Uh, the base is all done. It's all milled out on the bottom. I've already got the uh, the sensor mounted in here and um, got the little eyelet here that's gonna go uh, onto the stud for the, uh, the touch control. Cord comes out the back. And the last thing we're gonna do to this thing and the cap, this is the cap that goes on top of the, uh, the glass base. Uh, we're gonna put some of this uh, Howard cutting oil cutting board oil on it and uh, before we bolt this thing down so you just want to pour a little bit on top and just, just rub it in real good and uh, get the sides real good you can get the sides later but you want to get a good coat on here before uh, you bolt this uh, assembly to the top of it so you, you won't be able to get to it all so and you can let this dry for a few minutes and then wipe it down again and then same way with this thing, you just pour some of this in and uh, it brings out that color real nice. So it gives it a nice little finish to it. And that's all you need to do to it. You don't need to put any clear lacquer on or anything like that. This is food grade uh, cutting board oil. So it gives it a nice rich look. And uh, like I said, once it's once it's on there and it soaks in, you can do a couple coats on it if you want. But now we are going to uh, uh, it's a pretty good match, walnut, and, walnut and walnut. So uh, we'll set that aside, and then now we're going to bolt this thing onto here. We're going to flip it over, do the final wiring, and screw the vase on, put a light bulb in it, and it will be finished. This is about the end of our video and there's the finished product. So to give you a little uh, little specs on this thing, the total cost of the parts on this was about $320. I did have to spend about $80 in tools for the arch punches, the ABS cap, the hole saw, uh, a couple other things like that. Uh, I can always reuse those tools to make more of these, but $320 will get you all these fittings. This thing is... Uh, right at about 25 inches tall, 24 and three quarters. So uh, it sits up kind of high. And uh, the total weight on it, if you want to take a guess, that touch lamp is working nice. The total weight is 18 and three quarter pounds. So almost 19 pounds for this. So it's not real light. Um, it's not gonna fall over on you. It's very sturdy. So now that this is all done, we only have one more final test. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for. 
Um, I did forget to add that I did run an entire uh, gallon of uh, propanol alcohol through this thing. I wanted to make sure there were no contaminants, no debris, no uh, residual oils. I ran this through a couple times and then I flushed it thoroughly with hot water and then I got all that out of there. So now it's time to put in our product. This is a one liter bottle of Jack Daniels. what it's going to look like sitting on your bar. And for the final test, touch that lamp and it just goes off everywhere. Got a little dribble coming off. There you go folks. Cheers and thanks for watching.